Hey, it's Soul, and welcome to Warcraft Weekly, the show that takes WoW's most controversial game to real life issues and doesn't cover them because that's how you take the oxygen away. Hit the like button, subscribe for the copium drenched coverage, and let's go. The release of 10.2 is still pretty up in the air. Watch as I string you along even further. Raid testing for the Amirjasil raid began this week. Aside from Farak, all the bosses on all difficulties are going to be available with the final test ending on October 16th. That's about five weeks of raid testing. Meanwhile, while earlier this year, Aberus in 10.1 got 7 weekends worth of testing starting the week of March 16th with the last test of the week of April 28th. I mean, sure, it's only a 2 week difference, but like, dude, that's like a 2 week difference. When comparing the two schedules, the timetable obviously is being greatly accelerated. Normal and mythic testing is happening sooner, there's more test days in the 5 week period as opposed to the 7 week period, and of course the schedule is up for change in case of anything, from catastrophic failure to catastrophic ur failure. That's like if a cat knocked over a critical dev's workstation and was like, BUFF DEMON HUNTERS MOTHER -er. So this is like, fast. And here's what's more. These days, the WoW team announces patch releases a few additional weeks in advance. 10.17 was announced like a month before its recent launch. When raid testing ended for patch 10.1, it released like a week later. And based on that criteria, it's possible that within the next two weeks, we might already get a release date for the patch. But is a launch date of October 24th too soon? Because if we follow the regular patterns, Season 3 of Dragonflight is going to begin with BlizzCon and the big reveal of WoW's next expansion happening that very weekend. Now, I'm not going to pretend I know the Venn diagram uh, that is like people who watch and participate in the Race to World first, and then people who tune in for BlizzCon and like the big expansion announcements live, but somehow I just don't think it's such a great idea to have that and the race at the same time. That messes with people watching the race and keeping up with the news, it like dilutes the excitement of both things happening, and it messes with staff who can't relax during the first BlizzCon weekend since 2019, because then they'll be busy standing by in case encounter tweaks need to be done. But you know, let's humor ourselves for a bit. Is there an ideal situation with an October 24th release? There kind of is, actually. What if instead of the usual one-week preseason, we have a two-week preseason? That means an October 24th patch and Season 3 right after BlizzCon weekend. Folks can then enjoy whatever it is that the patch has to offer for you know one additional, potentially agonizing week. The Turbulent Timeways event is still happening during the 24th, and even with a patch drop, it's still likely to only give Season 2 gear, so there's no real harm done there. After BlizzCon, as soon as Blizzard folks are back at their desks, wherever they're at, fans are back from out of town, boom, we get the season, it starts. We get more story that gives context and the impact of WoW's expansion announcement from just the other week, it really starts to settle in. And it also happens to be a Darkmoon Fair and a Time Walking Week. That's going to mean some easy to get normal gear for the new season and a bit of boost to rev after the preseason. It, it, it all looks very neat and compact and of course it could be wrong, right? If the patch doesn't drop until the 7th of November, like after BlizzCon, that's pushing this entire schedule back about two weeks, and while the wait is going to be longer, the news and reactions, at least they're going to have a little bit more time to breathe. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your takes. The work towards gearing you're doing now might be pretty meaningless. That's not my usual vibe, really, but I had to hook you in somehow. Gotcha. We gotta talk about what we know so far about item levels in patch 10.2 in Season 3 because it's gonna be a little bit different. Normally, as we move from patch to patch or season to season, we get a new round of things to do and item levels go up. To be precise, item levels have been going up by 26 every season for the past couple of, well, for quite a few tiers now. So the mythic loot from Season 1's Vault of the Incarnates dropped at an item level of 424, which is the same item level as the normal version of Season 2's Aberus Raid Gear, and that's before pumping in upgrades using crests and flight stones and such. So 26 item level is basically a gear jump, the equivalent of two raid difficulties. In Season 3, item levels are going to jump by three raid difficulties, so that's going to be 39 item level. There might be some big repercussions here. It's going to mean that for someone like me, who does heroic raids and has an item level of about like 440 or so, when I walk into the normal version of the upcoming raid, the first boss is going to drop like item level 454 gear. 
it's pretty wild. And for some, this might feel a little bit better because it's going to feel like, hey, we got to do a little bit more gearing in order to progress through, you know, whatever difficulty that we play at. Some folks feel like gearing and progression have gone a little bit too fast, that they're able to finish raids before even gearing up. It also means that with the way things are presently, if this goes live, it's going to be a really good idea to run the weekly heroic quest for champion gear and probably run lots of low level mythic keys to gear up fast. But there's a certain demographic of people who might find this inflation of sorts to be a little bit awkward. And I'm talking about folks that want to get some value out of gearing up right now before the patch using these 0.5 and 0.7 events. These are the people who are doing dream surges meaningfully for the item level 415 champ gear, the weekly heroic quest that exists right now, maybe some raid finder, uh, crafting gear, you know, anything to feel more prepared for what's coming in 10.2. It's a very natural gamer kind of thing to do. But now we know that in season three, explorer gear, which is like the lowest level of gear, it's going to drop at an item level of 415, which is the same as the champion gear that people are, you know, kind of scraping by to get now, which might make some people feel like, hey, what's the point of me doing all this stuff now? Now, I definitely don't mean to diminish anyone's efforts here, but consider this. Before every major patch, I tend to make a video where I do a little experiment. I pretend that I'm a freshly leveled character, and I find out if I can survive the current patch content. Kind of like a naked and afraid scenario, where there's no main to send me gear, there's not really a lot of gold to just buy stuff from the auction house, it's just my wits and probably my leveling green. I always end up okay though, because of starting gear that I get from questing, and I fully expect that to happen here too. Uh, now give me one second while I take some copium. I feel like the WoW team is doing its usual thing of catering to everyone at once. Folks who are here and present in the game between major patches, it's like, hey, here are some new activities to help you along while we throw up some like events and transmog and new evergreen farms and the works. And then here you are, the red carpet's rolled out, so you're in the brand new patch, ready to gear up for whatever is coming next. Meanwhile, they're like, hey, freshly leveled character with no alts, welcome to the Emerald Dream. Here's a mount, and you know, we're gonna hook you up with some gear because, oh my, God, those item level 300s, no, 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 that will just not do. Now that I said my piece on it, I'm coming to the conclusion that as a typical content creator, I'm totally overthinking this. But I'd like to hear what you think of this further inflated item level. Not so much how you think it's going to affect the game, but how you're looking at this personally. The Secrets of Azeroth event is over, and you know what? It turned out to be pretty good. Truth be told, the jury's still out, with more and more players completing all of the steps of the event. I'm not going to spoil you here, but I want to summarize how I took this in. It it doesn't seem like a big deal to many, and that's totally okay. I just want to talk about why it was a big deal to me. I really like how it brought me back to more old school MMO gameplay where we would pick up a quest and have to actually pay attention to the quest to understand what's going on, and more importantly, where to go and what to do. Today, we have a built-in auto quest tracking thing with arrows and waypoints and markers to tell us where to go. It's not a WoW thing either, it's a gaming thing these days, and I have to admit that, you know what, this is fine. This is just how the industry as a whole has shifted over the years. Even back in the day, we had add-ons like Carbonite, and you know, since then the add-ons have gotten that much more sophisticated. So anyway, the Secrets Quest was a fun throwback that got me a bit more involved in the world. It got me looking at what's in front of me as opposed to just the map. Because of the event's nature, it didn't use the quest UI the way that we're used to, but one little drawback was that uh, we had to deal with an ever-growing inventory full of like these rando clues that we had to manually delete later. Perhaps if we get more events like this, we can maybe have a little journal item or a UI that records all these things for us as we go. Like, think of the archaeology UI, but for clues and notes. The takeaways from this event included a bunch of cool cosmetics, but also some pretty compelling story that uncovers what is so far a mystery at cosmic levels and the subtle promise of more events like this to come. If we look back on the event, it's really just like a long quest line that can be cleared in a few short hours. I say play however you like. It's why I made a guide that dispels all those mysteries so you can blow past it for the rewards, you know, play however you like. But frankly, I hope that more than fewer people decide to just do it on their own to appreciate a little bit of classic sleuthing and solving. The Wild Team isn't going to update Mythic Plus affixes in Season 3, and players are pretty pissed. At least that's the initial reaction, after an interview developers had with MMORPG.com. There aren't any direct quotes, just paraphrasing in part of the writer, but according to the article in regards to affixes, quote, they currently don't have any plans for updating them as part of Season 3. But they will pay a lot of attention to player feedback on the PTR. 
So if Mythic Plus is a game mode that you care about doing, spending some time in them on the PTR and giving them feedback about how the balance feels will be very important. Since it is an entirely new set of dungeons in the Mythic Plus roster this time, they're keen to hear what works and what doesn't. Many reactors stopped at the don't have any plans portion of the quote before mouthing off over on social media. Now, the feedback isn't coming from nowhere, of course. The reception of the newer affixes like Incorporeal and Afflicted it hasn't been so great for any number of reasons. But Mythic Plus is also more than just the affixes. It's also the combos of said affixes. It's the dungeons themselves and the abilities that are in there. It's also the key level and, of course, the group comp. How dispel and CC heavy are these dungeons going to be compared to the previous season? Is a Keystone Heroes experience going to be the same as a Keystone Slacker like myself? That's the... That's the challenge when trying to discuss and give feedback for Mythic Plus, because their problems are not necessarily my problems, are not necessarily other people's problems, let alone the person who matters the most here, you. The Wild Team was quick to invite people to the PTR, not just to practice or look for exploits for the next MDI or Great Push, but to give feedback before this goes live. While some are quick to point out that this is supposed to be the Wild Team's job, you know, to test and figure this sort of stuff out, I know from observation that the people who do participate in Mythic Plus testing, it's super limited to a certain demographic. The WoW team knows this and they end up having to make their best estimates for everyone, leading those people who do give feedback to be like, oh darn, well I guess there's the devs not listening again, when unfortunately they are, they're just burdened with having to care about players at every skill level, even if they don't care to test or give feedback, and there's no obligation to. But let's pull away from the back and forth arguments there, my question for you folks is, well, at least off the top of your heads, which dungeons sound like more of a problem than others based on the affixes that we have. And that's the show. Real quick, I want to point out a fun event that I held the other day with the guild. It's my infamous guild race, where I have folks run low-level characters or level 10 characters from one point to another, and I watch them figure out how the heck I got all the way up to this random ledge here on Thaldrazis. The intent outside of me watching them scurry around the ground like crazy people was to give them like, at least a moment to appreciate a world like the Dragon Isles on foot. It's something that we haven't had to do since what, like an hour or so into the expansion? They had a lot of fun, which might be different from folks who don't enjoy dragon riding and are grounded anyway, but I invite you folks who might be taking dragon riding a bit for granted, try it out. If you have a non-level 70, maybe spend a few levels on the ground and really experience the Anaran Plains or the Waking Shore with like super minimal flying, like just as little as you can. It might be eye-opening to see Oh, okay, there's a path that's that really leads all the way up here. But for now, let's wrap things up with a very wholesome thanks to our friends over on Twitch and Patreon. I am so, so grateful for your support. To you, viewer, thank you so much for making it to the end. You're helping the algorithm, and all that's left is for you to like the video, subscribe for more of the coverage, catch me live on Twitch, and I'll catch you later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy.